First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, and thanks so much for joining us. Today we're going to show you how to make one of the most essential items for any Civil War reenactor, the housewife. Now for those of you who may not be familiar, a housewife was a common soldier's term for a sewing kit. During the war, these were made by different charitable organizations and sent to soldiers. Um, sometimes they were made at home and sent to soldiers in the field, and sometimes soldiers made them in, in camp just out of basic necessity. Now, these would be made to all different shapes, sizes, uh, all sorts of different materials, but they all had the basic sewing essentials that a soldier would need. Uh, you're going to have some pins, some large needles, some small needles, uh, extra fabric for patching any tears in your clothing, uh, military and civilian style buttons, I also keep um, scissors and wax linen thread available in mine and then it just folds up into this nice little kit and you can button it closed and throw it into your knapsack until the next time you're in camp. Now at Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters, we've done you even one better. So not only are we going to show you how to make one of these very handy kits, we've actually posted uh, our pattern. Uh, on our website at secondusss.com. I'll have a link down in the description so that way you can print it out at home and make your own. So to get started, all you're really going to need are a few basic items. You're going to need a sewing machine, although you can hand sew it just as easily if you like, uh, an iron, an ironing board, um, something to cut with, the pattern that you can print, um, and then some pins, a needle, a thread, and a button to close up your housewife with. And of course, material of your choice. On our website, I had some leftover cotton drill from some shelter halves that I made. Um, you could, I usually just make it out of cotton and I just go through all my different sewing scraps. So as long as the pattern is of uh, some historical authenticity, and there are um, people online that sell historical reproduction um, fabrics. So that might be one way for you to go. But essentially whatever you have on hand that isn't too clearly modern, like no polyesters or cord corduras or anything like that. But once you have all those together, we're gonna move over to the cutting table and get started and show you how to make one of these. Now, before you get started, make sure you do yourself a big favor and take a minute and iron all of the fabric that you plan on using for this. Then you're going to want to make sure you grab your pattern that we have available for free at our website. Um, when this uh, prints, make sure that on your printing dialog that you make sure it does not say uh, fit to page. You don't want any sort of additional uh, modifications done to the printing so that way it doesn't come out distorted. And then one thing that I do to help tape everything together is I'll cut out the pocket pattern and use that to line up everything uh, before I tape the pattern back together. So I am going to use a couple different fabrics to add some pop of color. So this this will be my outside of my housewife. And then this one will be the inside of my housewife. So I have all that in place. And then we need to cut two of these panels. So I'm just gonna place that there. And then if you um, have any large washers, large washers make really nice pattern weights. And whenever it comes to cutting out patterns, I prefer a rotary cutting tool. It moves the fabric a lot less. And then all you're going to have to do is cut out your fabric. So once you get all this cut out, we'll uh, show you the next step. Now that we have all of our pieces cut out, we need to make some preliminary marks before we start ironing things. Now the first things we are going to hem will be our pockets. So this pattern has three pockets. And then to make your life a lot easier, what I like to do is we have to hem the top and bottom of the top two pockets. And then on the third pocket, we only have a top hem. Now these hems are designed to be a quarter of an inch. So if you flip your pockets over, 
And if you draw a line at half an inch, when you fold these over and press them with the iron, you'll give yourself a nice guideline. Now with cotton, I usually just stick with a pencil. Depending on the type of material, you may want to consider, say, uh, like a fabric pen or something like that to help you do that. And this will also help us uh, stay, stay away from being confused as we uh, hem and assemble our pockets. So once you get these all marked, let's go over to the ironing board and get these pressed. Now we're at the ironing board, ready to press our hems. Now, pressing your hems will help make sure everything stays nice and crisp and it'll stay in place as we're running it either through the sewing machine or if you're choosing to hand sew this. When I was teaching myself how to sew years ago, I really wish someone would have told me right away just how important ironing was to sewing. Because on some projects, you'll probably spend more time pressing and ironing than you will actually sewing the material. So now this one has two hems, which means this is one of the top two pockets. And just take your time. You don't have to use any, you know, additional ironing tricks. You don't need to starch these. I mean, if you want, if you had a steam iron and you wanted to steam these, you can't, but usually just a nice hot press on a cotton setting is all you need. You can see I'll flip it over. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then you're gonna do that to the other two and then we'll be ready to sew a hem. Now that we have all of our hems pressed, we are ready to stitch them down and we are going to edge stitch these hems. And to do that on a sewing machine, we're going to use a zipper foot. And you can see here that the zipper foot allows you to obviously not only sew zippers, but to stitch very, stitch very closely to the edge of a piece. So when I um, oftentimes I'll sew a hem, I'll use one of these, or if I want to top stitch, I will also use a zipper foot. And you can see that these are quite a bit different from the standard feet that usually come with most sewing machines. Um, as far as how close it will let you stitch to, stitch to the edge of something. Now, just about any sewing machine, whether it's an expensive German sewing machine or whatever you can afford at Walmart, just about every sewing machine is going to come with these two very basic feet. So now we are going to put the zipper foot back on the sewing machine and we're going to stitch our hem. Now the zipper foot will stitch both left on the left side and the right side of the piece. So we have our open hems here. Now this, the edge stitching will prevent the fraying of this cotton fabric. Now, if you wanted to be extra fancy, you can actually fold this over again. So that way there is absolutely no unfinished edge to the hem, but you're gonna have to factor in that additional loss of material in modifying the pocket pattern. So you'd actually have to make the pocket pattern um, taller based on how many of these completely finished hems that you want to have in the piece. So now we're going to put this into the sewing machine. Now I don't have this stitch set super fine. Um, sewing machines did exist during the Civil War. Obviously they weren't electric. And there's a lot of talk, especially on civilian forums, about uh, proper stitch length. So generally what I do is I just increase the length of my stitch a little bit. And then all we do is feed it in. And you'll notice I'm not um, back stitching any of this um, or knotting the ends because all of that will be taken care of when we pin and sew everything together as one solid piece. So these uh, untied ends will be taken care of. And we'll just finish running that through. And then we'll lift up our foot and trim our ends. And we have our stitched hem. And because it's stitched so closely, 
uh, any of that frame that exists now, that'll be the end of it. And you can trim that off if you want. So now uh, you are going to do this for the rest of the pockets and then we'll meet back and uh, pin everything together and show you the next step. Now we have our three pockets hemmed for our three pocket housewife. And what we're going to do is we need to pin these in place so we can stitch the bottom of the pocket onto one of the panels. So we have our pattern. And what I like to do is just line up the pattern next to the panel. I'll put a pattern weight or something heavy on it so it doesn't move on me. And we have our three pockets on here. We're not going to worry about the bottom pocket just yet. So we take our two top pockets with the hem on the bottom and the top and we're just going to lay them on our panel and use the pattern to line everything up and you can measure and lay everything out if you want that's fine but what I like to do is just line everything up on the pattern one pocket two pocket three pocket and then we should have a half of an inch gap between here and I usually just sight down it now once I have everything where I want it to be, and I like it, I'll just put a few pins into the pocket to hold everything in place. And then once everything is pinned, you're going to want to take it back to the sewing machine. And with that zipper foot still on from hemming, you're going to want to edge stitch the bottom of the pockets. So you're just going to run a stitch right along here, as close to the edge as you can. And that's going to help make sure you maximize the most amount of space for your pockets. So I'm going to go sew these. And when I'm done with that, we'll come back and I'll show you how to put it all together. We have our pockets, our top two pockets sewn into place now, with a nice edge stitch. And we're going to line it back up with our pattern. And now we're going to take our last in our bottom pocket. And we are going to place that in its spot. Okay. Making sure everything's nice and aligned and where we want it. Now we need to take our other panel that we cut. Now. In sewing, you always have a right side and a wrong side of the fabric. On cotton, it's generally pretty simple because the right side is the part with the pattern on it. And the wrong side is the opposite side. All fabric has a right and a wrong side. But uh, in this case, we want to make sure that our right sides are together. So then we just, without moving our bottom pocket, we're going to line up our panels real nice. And then we're going to pin everything into place. And you just go all the way around, pinning as you go. Now one area where it's not important to pin is the bottom. Because we're only going to start stitching here and go around. And then we're going to finish over here too. We want to leave a hole right here so we can turn this whole thing inside out. So I'm going to get this pinned and I will meet you back at the sewing machine. Back at the sewing machine, we want to make sure that we get rid of this zipper foot and we put on our standard foot. And we're going to use this to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around our sandwiched housewife. Now on my sewing machine, uh, from the needle to the end of the foot is a quarter of an inch. Um, yours may vary, but we're looking for a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to start on a corner of the bottom. I'm going to hold my strings and I'm just going to give it some stitching. And then take my time around the corners. So I get a nice crisp corner. And I'm going to pull these extra strings out of my way if I can. Okay. Now I'm going to stitch all the way around. Being careful of my pins. You can pull your pins out as you go. I'm doing this long enough. I rarely hit one. 
And then take your time and try to get that nice even curve around the top of the housewife. And this is all pretty much the same too if you're hand sewing. It is, it's going to take you a little while longer. And it's this stitching that's going to keep that bottom pocket into place. So we slow down as we get to the end. And we turn the piece. And then we're going to stitch in maybe one or two inches. Okay. Now we're going to take the pins out and I'll show you how to turn this inside out. Now that we have everything sewn together, we're going to remove our pins. Get these out of the way. Now we have to turn this inside out and a little top tip for making sure you have nice sharp corners on your finished products is take a nice pair of scissors and trim some of the extra material off of the the corners well, that way there'll be less bulk there now we sewed everything around and we left this hole in the bottom now we want what you're going to want to do is stick your fingers up and try to get the very opposite end of the housewife right there and then we're going to turn it inside out now how easy or how difficult this is, is really going to de be determined by the type of material that you use. Cotton works real easily. We just gotta make sure we turn our pocket back around, our bottom pocket. Okay. And I wanna stick our hand back up in here and smooth out the top seam. Real nice, okay. So now it's starting to look like a housewife. Now you can take a pencil, an edge turner, uh, a dowel, anything, as long as you're careful, and turn the corner of your housewife out so you can get nice, clean corners. I'm gonna come over on this side and do the same thing. Okay, now we are going to press this flat. And by pressing it, you wanna take your time so you don't wanna see the other panel. If yours is the same color, it doesn't really matter too much. So you just kinda of eyeball your seams, make sure everything's nice and lined up. And you just go slow. This will flatten everything out really nice and have everything stay in its place for our final step of top stitching. Everything nice and pressed. Now, down here, since we sewed in the corners, you can just use your fingers to line up your seam Make sure it's even and you press that. And then that'll be nice and closed when we top stitch it. And I will see you back at the sewing machine. Back at the sewing machine with the zipper foot back on, you can just start just about anywhere. And you want to top stitch all the way around the housewife. And this is gonna close that gap that we had on the bottom and this is the part where you really want to make sure you take your time because this is going to be one of the most visible parts of the entire project. Take your time. Make your corners nice and sharp. One more. There we go. And then you're going to just sew all the way around. And then we'll show you the very next part 
when we meet back. Now that everything is top stitched together, we're back at the ironing board and you can give it one more quick flat press. And what I like to do is fold it up and press as I go. And this way, this just helps it sort of fold up on itself nicely. And then fold over the top. And there we have an almost complete housewife. So what we need to do now is you can use your pattern if you like, but you use your pattern if you need to and mark a buttonhole. So how big you make your buttonhole is dependent on how big your buttons are. I get these uh, bone buttons from Shipwreck Beads. You can get 25 of them for only $3.55, which is a pretty great deal. I use a lot of them. And so I just have to make sure that my buttonhole is just a little bit larger than that button. So finding a good center location. I'll just poke in my scissors and cut a hole. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is hand sew that. There's all kinds of info out there on how to hand sew a buttonhole, so I won't bore you with that. But just make sure your button fits nicely and then you'll sew on your button. Now, the button will actually line up in the middle of this pocket, okay? So you just have to make sure that when you're sewing your button on, you don't actually sew your pocket closed. And then the other thing to consider is if you line everything exactly like the pattern, you'll have a nice flat housewife. But if you plan on keeping a lot of stuff in here, um, extra fabric, lots of thread, big scissors, tons of buttons, you may want to think about, instead of having your button right there on the natural fold, you might want to build in some expansion by maybe moving your button up just a little bit. And that will allow you for some expansion as you build up your housewife. So I'm going to sew this buttonhole on and be right back. So there you have it, the final result. Your very own Civil War housewife that you can fill with all the items you might need for those emergency repairs at your events. Now don't forget, you can get the pattern that you need from our website at secondusss.com. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down below. Thanks as always for liking and subscribing, and we'll see you next time.